Uh oh. Here it is. Uh Wow, that art. Holy cow. That's good. That's that's good. That's Man. Okay. Okay. That's it. Here you go, Dale. What's the surprise? Ooh, I like that. Wait, what do you do? No. You can't be serious. That's so dumb. Uh-uh. 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 Hey guys, what's going on? Kyle and Alex here uh, with the car guys. We are playing our um our last place match to see who gets last place. If we lose, it's last place. If we win, it's not last place. Go team. Hashtag bragging rights. How are you doing today, Alex? I'm I'm doing well. I'm excited to see a, um, hopefully an OTK. Right. <laughs> um, so as you guys see for the first uh, for the first match we have, um, if we play all five of our matches, I'm not really sure. Um, we actually have a rematch from week week two. I want to say uh, it's Nathan Crawford. He's actually playing Viserai this time. Um, has been playing Briar all season long. Um, been very good with uh, with his Briar deck, but um, showing it showing uh, different skills today. And he's playing against Brandon Arb Arbaca, if I'm not mistaken. Um, playing Oldham, so uh, Brandon also. Um, if you guys didn't know, these players are uh, very experienced. Nathan got 20th at nationals, um, and then Brandon I think actually got ninth at nationals. So uh, two very very good players duking it out. Um, what do you guys think? What do you think right now, Alex, um, of the matchup Oldham versus Viscera? Is it just very heavy in Viscera's uh, favor, I, just I, because I, it can just block out no TK? I wouldn't say that it's heavy in Viscera's favor, but when you put players of this caliber um, on the field, I think it's going to be interesting because um, the typical the typical answer I think is that Viscera mm -hmm. sides for the OTK. Uh, match and just tries to speed Oldham down while he's not really doing a whole lot. But if you look at the board here, I think that uh, you, you said it's Brandon, right? Uh, Brandon, um, yeah. Yeah, Brandon, I think, has a different, slightly different build. Um, so we've got an Anathos on the board, uh, and we have a Goliath Gauntlet, and I think. I mean, that was a, a blue disable, you know, right there. Like, I think there's some cards in, in Brandon's deck that are going to make this matchup just slightly different than normal. I don't think he's got a, a super streamlined build here, and he might be ready uh, for this Viserai match. So it'll just kind of be, you know, up to, like, the skill of the player, right? Like, he might for might sure. be he might be prepared, um, and it might not be as, as in the Viserai's favor as we think. I'm um, curious as to how the Anathos gets used here um, and how it, how well it does for us. You see you see Nathan come in just for each strike and bottom decking a card here. Um, coming in for five, assuming assuming it's just go against he didn't draw a card. So Yeah. Um possibly a couple bad hands that he's had so far. Um, just trying to filter through to uh I guess pressure pressure on him a little bit here. For um, sure. And hopefully you can get some cards out of the Oldham deck that maybe they really value for like late game, like um, as many of those uh, blue earth cards as you can get out. The for sure, uh, you know that's always a good thing. But another thing you'll notice here um, is there's no crown of seeds, there's no the shield. Uh, you the know, skull like, Goliath and Oldham boots. So he's a. Uh... It looks like he's playing Bravo with Oldham. Yeah, for um, sure. So I'm curious as like if if there's a reason behind playing this way with Oldham. I wonder why he's decided to go Evergreens. Um, if you guys don't know what Evergreen does, I have it on the screen here. Um, if it's played from the Arsenal, put on the, on the bottom of the deck as soon as the combat chain closes. So um, it's it's like a pseudo drone of brutality, right? Like um, rest in peace to drone of brutality. Right. Uh, 
typically guess... not a very good card when you're trying to get when your opponent's trying to OTK you. Yeah. Um, you're not going to get to the end of the end of the deck. So. Hmm. Especially when you're not activating Crown of Seeds all the time, cycling through your deck a whole lot faster. Mm -hmm. So this, I don't know. I really don't know um, exactly what he's trying to do here. There's a Runeblade Barrier. This is oh, uh, a Rune Blade Barrier. Barrier. This is a really cool, um, really cool addition to the deck against against the Oldham deck, and really lets you know that Nathan's trying to set up for a uh, for a later big OTK. You know, you can kind of play some of these cards that are going to stall out the game a little bit. Uh, so that you can build up to that like magical thirty rune chant, thir sure. twenty five to thirty rune chant number that you need to to try to kill your opponent. Nathan's been working with me a little bit on the Visceride deck since I've picked it up, and um, at first I never really thought about all of the applications for Rune Blood Barrier. I felt like it was like a fail safe to not die essentially, but the way he's really told me kind of how everything works like room blood bear is probably one of the best cards in his deck when he's wanting to go for the otk um and now you see an earth lore surge into endless winter that's beefy um, that's that's kind of disgusting right now uh, because yeah, like yeah five. that's just disgusting it's coming in for it's coming in for 13 um and oh okay looks so like he, he pitched, swapped it out for the pulse of eyes yeah, and loft here looks to me that he um looks to me he pitched the evergreen and he's revealing uh, Pulse of Eisenloft, which is an Ice Earth defense reaction. Um, so he's Ice Fusing here. Um, if you guys don't know what uh, Endless Winter does, it's uh, Ice Fusion. Olden Specialization says if it's uh, if it's fused, whenever the defending hero adds a defending card uh, to the chain link, um, create a Frostbite under their control. So every single thing that he defends with um is going to create a frostbite token and then if it hits also until the end of their next turn whenever they activate an ability give them another frostbite so he's coming in for 13 give you a shit ton of uh frostbites and that's just that's just going to stop anything that he has to do on his next turn here um and definitely going to make him more than likely need to full block this because you need to keep your 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 rune chance here you know for sure for sure you're two you're two turns in and or i guess three turns in and yet you you're only you know at six rune chance you, you're you're behind so another cool thing with endless winter is it says cards you block with so it actually includes the equipment yes um, with how many with how many frostbite tokens that you'll get yep looks like right now he's just defending five um would be taking eight okay so, so he's, he's gonna, gonna reduce. reduce okay makes it makes himself another um now he's taking four i believe and has three frostbites should have three frostbites and seven rune chants his rune chant will go rune chant count will go above him because they'll reduce the rune chant he's got another reduce oh. the rune chant okay oh. so here, here's here here's my um here's my thought process with this right <clears throat> so I feel like since you know we're we're going into day two of nationals in New Zealand, I feel like I feel like Brandon's kind of taking you know a page out of Matt Rogers' list um, with some of these cards, and maybe and and maybe just maybe uh, Nathan thought that might have been the route he was going to go, so he decided to put defense reacts in his deck, which usually you wouldn't want to do that. So um, to reduce the rune chance is very very good. Um, on Nathan's side to stop that play because that was absurd. I mean, either way, he was going to have to take that turn off, but not losing his rune chance and not losing any life total there was against an attack like that. Um, that's not often you're going to have the resources to, to mm -hmm. be able to fully block that. But I mean, having the rune blade barrier on the board, a rune blood barrier, he he's probably going to be stopping all of that anyway. But having the um, the defense reaction is so that he didn't have to lose his rune chance. Uh, it was I think that's going to be really important. This is best case scenario for him just coming in for Anathos. If he can just come back every turn with two cards to to create a little bit of rune chance, this um, is definitely looking good for Nathan at that point. If 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 uh, Brandon keeps on with the just the Anathos uh, turns, so for sure. And you'll see that he blocked with a couple of attacks here, so I'm mm -hmm. expecting some non-attacks to uh, to come down to buff up the 
the rune chant count here. Yep, that's exactly what's happening. Yep, that's, so this more... is this is such a great turn. Um, just yeah. Mordred and Reed just seems uh, very yeah. good. It creates like five rune chants or something like <clears throat> yeah, that. Yeah, that'll that'll create five. So the reduce is two plus one for the viscerai plus one for the Mordred tide. Um, so yeah, it'll be it'll be five. Um, what do you think, in uh, Nathan's arsenal here? Do you think uh... um, probably another D react or probably like a rattle bones? Um, when, a lot yeah. of times when you see a rattle bones in the Viscerai OTK decks, um, you kind of want to set up for that um, the OTK turn. So more than likely it'll be like a rattle bones or a Sonata or like a Mordred tie for that matter, right? Um, something that's going to go towards your OTK combo for sure, um, or just a sink below or like some sort of D react. Um, that he's the, holding balance, on to. the balancing effect with Viscerai is they can sit there and set up their rune chance, but they're giving their opponents full hands every turn. And I think the reason why Viscerai has a better matchup against Oldham is because Oldham's generally just not doing anything to you. They're going to hit you for, you know, six to eight a turn generally. Um, and that's on a good turn, you know, like they're just attacking you one time. And a lot of times Viscerai can just block with a couple of cards play out their rune chant cards and then just keep buffing where they're not getting punished for letting their opponent keep a full four to five card hand for um sure. oh, here we see that pulse of eyes and loft again um this time it's getting pitched for a thump is the was there any buff on this thump there wasn't um, was there? there was not it's just coming in for five and so you see you see a block for it might oh um it might be well, it wouldn't uh, be because it gets dominate when it's pumped, right? Uh, I believe so. I'm wondering. So, it, so could, it could it be playing around a? Th could it be? Could be playing yeah. around a? Like a pummel, possibly. That's what he was right. playing around. He's seen one or two pummels get pitched and blocked with. Yeah. Um, so, he's definitely got pummel on the brain, which he blocked with one of his. Um, he bought to his... read the runes. Exactly, and, and he had another. He had another one in hand, so that's that's very good. Yeah. Um, to be able to still produce some rune chants even after a, a big block like that. Oh, Channel man. Mount Heroic. Uh, like I told you, I think this is a completely different Oldham build, uh, and it's proving to wow. be exactly that. Nice play so. out of Brandon here. So you're gonna have uh, you're gonna have nine dominate, um, and if it hits, they he's gonna discard a card. Um, this channel is mount here is nuts. Um, nice play oh. on Brandon's end. I'll be completely honest here. This is hitting. Oh, for <laughs> sure, hundred percent. It's definitely hitting. And like you have to think at this point too, like with the cards in the hand, how much you're willing to take, right? So I guess you're just going to defend three here and take six. I think it's probably just the the correct route to go. Just um, card your cards and move on. Exactly. Like essentially, you're taking some damage. You're you're getting, you know, you're defending. Technically, with two cards at this point, you might take a little bit more damage. And if if you still have two cards, then you can do something with it. So, um, I don't think I don't think that was as bad as you know we initially had thought. But as you see, though, we got a uh, we got a tome uh, going into the bottom of the deck. So Channel Mount is going to stick around for a turn. Um, so possibly uh, going to wreak some havoc on the next turn as well. <clears throat> and if and this so is just see... another setup turn, then then that's the turn that you get punished uh, as a Viscerai player for just doing setups and letting your opponent keep a full hand. Um, that Channel Mount Heroic is probably going to do some work, assuming if he has some way to get go again in the deck, which I don't think I've seen yet, other than maybe have we seen like an Enlightened Strike or something? Um, I haven't seen a really way to attack twice yet, which that's where Channel Mount Heroic becomes a, a big problem. So, so when talking to Nathan a few days ago in regards to the Viscerai versus like essentially Guardian matchups, um, with with Whisper the Oracle, a lot of times you just want to dig for one card, and that's Sonata, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so if you notice, when he played Whisper, he bottom decked one and top decked a card. So I would assume he does have a Sonata in his hand, and he just has to wait out and hit about 22 rune chance, and then he's off to the races himself. Spinal with Mount Heroic is pretty disgusting. Um, yeah, 12... Uh, 12 is yeah. insane. <laughs> so, um, this is definitely going to, uh, in my opinion, force a little bit out of uh, Nathan's hand here. Um, 
You might just give him uh, give him the skull cap plus a couple cards. Um, it looks like he's just gonna give him the uh, hand instead. I guess it was probably rattle bones that he took then, if that's the case, uh, when he top decked the card, which also makes sense. So that tells me too that the uh, the the arsenal is probably not the rattle bones I was expecting. Um, and, and it could just be a sonata, right? Like, um, yeah, I mean, return. definitely hanging on to a sonata for when you need it. I mean, nothing wrong with that. Um, it's kind of interesting to me where the Sonata could sit in the Arsenal for as long as it has, mm -hmm. because like generally in OTK decks, I mean even in any any card game, um, anytime you have to hang on to a card like a, like that for any lengthy amount of time, uh, it's usually pretty detrimental because you're not getting the full advantage out of your deck when you're just having one of your slots permanently taken up for half the game. For sure. Um, for sure. So I'm, I'm sure he's kind of digging for for some more of those rune chants, but uh, the old the Oldham deck is just keeping the pressure on. And as soon as I saw those green cards and the Anathos with the Goliath Gauntlet, I was like, I'm pretty sure this guy's going to be attacking most of the game because he knows if he just hits back, he's not going to win this game. So yeah, for sure. keeping keeping the pressure on super super important. Um, I haven't I don't even think I've seen an ice card other than the Pulse of Ice and Loft yet. So um, I don't think I have either. Hmm. Uh, I really don't know the reason for playing old him other than the like surprise factor of like oh here's all these good cards in my oldham deck you know like yeah. is, is that the is that the main draw I uh, guess. Of, and, and being able to play I mean I guess you get to play all of the earth cards right like you get to play the elemental cards but is that more powerful than what Bravo is trying to do you know I'm not 100% sure but if he can just string along these channel man heroics you know um, i mean yeah if you got it you got it right <laughs> and it's it's funny too because do you remember the match that we uh i believe we commentated where uh nathan had the the triple channel man heroics that, that crazy yeah, game? yeah yeah, Th yeah this this is who he played against so oh, yeah. uh i think brandon yeah. wants to uh get his salty run back with his own channel mount <laughs> makes, so. makes sense i mean so like the only advantage that I'm trying, like I'm, I just keep kind of going through it in my mind, like what's the advantage of doing this? And the only advantage I can think of is that you get access to channelment heroic for more accesses to pumps on your thumps. Um, I mean, and, you see an awakening and a choke slam here. Um, well, I mean the cho cho choke slam. I don't think it's really gonna do much here. And this is what I was talking no, about. Like the old, the, the old deck just has these like five to seven power attacks, you know, that just kind of come in and don't really threaten a whole lot yeah. uh, nathan nathan's up to 16 rune chance and he's still nowhere near have, like threatening to die and his opponent has done nothing but but attack him uh, attack him super you know, tall. Uh, yeah. yeah he's just attacking tall he's not really getting the damage in that he he really needs to be but yeah nathan's probably just going to take some damage here and try to put some uh try to put some threats back on the board himself this turn So so like Nathan taking seven here, um, right? Because choke slam's crush effect is is one hundred percent irrelevant. Um, his in this matchup, honestly, his hand must be very good if he just blocked with a skull cap. He looks like he might be just going for it here. Um, if his hand is just that good, and look, yeah, he's breaking Skeleta. So, um, probably see a Sonata from the Arsenal to yeah, start with. More than likely, if he's got a. If he's got Sonata and has a ninth blade in hand, this game's probably over. Um, I could be wrong, but um, it's very hard to do anything, especially now that we that, like we see technically um, Brandon only has four block in his equipment, um, and that's it, right? Um, so, oh, well, he's got a ninth blade that he can uh, he can add to his hand, which is good. So. His hand must be quite gas if he's going for it now, right? Yeah, yeah I would think so. So how how many is he is is he revealing here? Can we do math? Uh, Sixteen, is eight. This, is it, is it eighteen eight? cards? Or eighteen divided by two? Is that what is that how it works? Yeah, nine? I think he's is it nine cards. Something like that. I think it's nine or ten Four, cards. Four, five, bad six, math. seven, eight, nine. He's, There's he's got nine. a perfect he's got a perfect uh, perfect split so far. Uh, he revealed nine altogether. Looks like he's doing ten. Uh, I always forget what the math is on this thing. What does it say? 
Um, instant, next attack action and non-attack action card you play, gain cost l less for each rune chant you control. Yeah, so pretty much, so pretty much what's happening, three. what's happening is here is his, his ninth blade is free no matter what. Um, or if he wants to go like Dread Triptych and then play Mauvern Skies from his hand. <laughs> or, you know, some something stupid. Um, but yeah, he's 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 gonna definitely get the ninth blade here. Um You pretty much always have to start with the ninth blade, right? Uh yeah, it's it's ideal. Um he's probably now that I look at it, he's got a blue spell blade assault, a dread triptych, a red amplify, a red rune flash. So I think he's gonna more likely get the red rune flash prioritize a blue and then if he if he already has ninth blade he's not gonna add it to his hand um and that's probably the card he leaves behind right he's, so, he's blocked with one and you see one here so if he has the other one in his hand um it's unlikely but mm -hmm. he definitely could if he, like you said if he doesn't take the ninth blade here he's definitely got one in his hand I think he's trying to prioritize another blue in his hand, which I kind of agree with too. Um, he doesn't have a Mordred Tide set up with this currently, and he would have he would have more than likely played it before he went Skeletta uh, Sonata. So um, <clears throat> it does make sense for him not to take the second Rune Flash because he's not generating any more um, any more Rune Chance on any sort of um, attack. It's only going to be like one per so. Um, he must Mr. have a couple meet and greets in his, in his hand. That's right, makes rune chance on any rune blade card after you've played a non-attack action, right? So um, even, the, yes. even the, even the attacks will generate rune Correct. chance. It, it, it'll, it'll, it'll create one, but, um, only creating one means that every rune flash is going to cost you two to play. Um, and that's, right. that's and if he has the blues, if, if he has the blues for it, then he could definitely... Definitely make it happen. This is this is crazy to see. Like you never see this in a game of Flesh and Blood, where somebody's got eight cards in hand. <laughs> like that's that's just silly. And you see, he took the four. Um, well, I think he should take five, or is it four? I guess four. Um, he took four arcane off that. So now, uh, his meet and greets, if he has, if he had any in his hand prior, um, are live as well. And he has the Mavrin, which is this is uh best case scenario for for nathan so now he can just go uh he can just go ninth blade for free um with 17 rune chance uh go again if it hits create another two and he's triggering viscerai to uh to make more essentially so um yep. the modern skies is going to get him one already because he played it after the sonata and then the ninth blade is going to generate him another so he's going to have two more rune chance coming through here he took um, all the rune chant damage. He took all the rune chant. He should be at two right now. Not one, but I guess he missed a trigger. Uh, where would he have gotten another rune chant from? Um, so he played a rune blade card in Mavern Skies after he played Sonata. Yeah, he added the uh, um, he added that to the total. Well, then he played the... Ninth Blade, which is a rune blade card. Right, and they all pop when he plays Ninth Blade. I, oh, I, I get that, but what I'm saying is Viscerai triggers when you play the Rune Blade to have a floating Rune Chant for the next after after that resolves. Right, and he had one after the ninth blade. Okay, right? Uh, no, he should he should have one more. Um, but uh, he's coming in for four and three, triggering Rune, um, another Rune Chant. Um, so the the Rune Flash was free here, so he's just gonna full block it. Um. I really don't know why the Ultim's just trying to keep his hand while he's at his opponent's at twenty six. Generally yeah. the generally the idea is just to block as much damage as you can on the OTK turn. Mm -hmm. And then I mean like unless his opponent's He's hand got is like another all reds. Mavrin? Wow. So his hand was double Mavrin, Sonata from the Arsenal, and then one unknown card we don't know yet. So Still should have those blues that he picked he's up. Got, right? He's got two blues, uh, an amplify the Arc Knight, uh, red, and then an unknown. And I would assume the unknown card is a meet and greet. 
Yeah, meet and um, greet would be the ideal one for sure. But regardless, play the Marvin Skies into anything here. Plus, but the regardless, meet and greet. he could go amplify here, and the amplify he just has to pitch one four, um, since he has two rune chance. Um, so he's gonna have two floating on top of this, um, coming in for six and two with go again. If it hits, create another rune chant. That's and he'll have a rune chant from this. Yeah, and he has a rune chant from the amplify. Hmm. Very. Very good sequencing out of out of Nathan. Like right here, this is definitely going to start getting cards out of his hand, um, which obviously he doesn't want to do. But he's um, <clears throat> and actually on top of that too, it actually breaks the chain. I don't think they realize that when you play the Mavern Skies, it breaks the chain. So the Skull Cap and the Tectonic Plating come back. Yep. I don't know if I'm they're sure. going to catch that or not, but I'm sure they know. But whether they. Uh... Whether they do anything about it, <laughs> that's right. another story. Right. Both of these players are skilled enough to, to catch on to that, but yeah, they're breaking the chain right now. Okay. Yep. And so it looks like he blocked the, uh, the arcane, uh, the rune chance, and now he's got to deal with six here. Six go again. He's just going to full block it. Um, okay. And so now we know he has... Um, Nathan might just win here. Okay, so he's got another non-attack in his hand then. If he's playing Creepers. What would that non-attack... He, it... he picked up... Uh... Ooh. Oh. Okay. Interesting. Played the Sonata. Or... To get go again. Oh, he's pitching for the Sonata as well. Yep, he's paying two. He's going to have two floating, so he's going to reveal four. If he hits here, this if he hit, if over. He hit, if it hits two, it's pretty much game, I think. And he whiffed. Oof. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Oof. I hate to see that. That is not where you want to be. <clears throat> not in the slightest, you know? And I guess to shuffle his deck. Um, and he still gets to come in here with... Um, with Reaping Blade for three and two as well. So he gets go again to be able to Reaping Blade here um, to, to force some more, which is good. Um, he just needed him, one more attack. He just he, needed one more. Yeah, didn't get to see a single. Uh, so he blocks one of the rune chants, takes one, and then he blocks two. So he's going to mm. take one and go to five. That was the turn he wanted to go off to because his opponent had two pummels in hand. Uh, his which... hand was very, his hand was very good for the crackback turn. No, I'm saying like it, his hand was horrible for blocking the OK, OTK yeah. turn. So, but Channel Mount Heroic is going to go away here, so he's not going to get to utilize that. Um, there was just no like, yeah. That's... And you got the counters on the skull cap and the and the plating. Okay. Ah, okay, so he shuffled those two cards in his deck. Okay. So now, yeah, he's passing. He's going to come back and make his play now. Um, <clears throat> with Olden being at five... Uh, just got to build up again, right? You just have to kind of build up because you Oldham, Oldham has 48 cards in deck compared to Nathan's 25. So um, if he can just, I guess, manage manage defending correctly, he just I mean, wins. He gets but better. If he gets he, back to about 10, 12 rune chance again, it's probably going to be over. I don't think his opponent's going to be able to stop two attacks with 12 rune chance. Uh, uh, for sure, at, for while sure. While he's on five life. Yeah. It just depends on whether he has enough rune chance creation left in his deck, which... Uh, he's only played one Mordred Tide, right? Um, he has only played one Mordred Tide. If he can, like, uh, if he can get a big turn off with a Mordred Tide, he's, he can do things. He's got the life total to work with, so... And if you can find a way to... I don't know, like, start with some... I don't think there's any way to, like, chip damage with Viscerai without losing your... Without losing your rune chance, so... I'm assuming the play here is just to keep building up uh, after this, considering you have a 26, 26 life to work with. I don't think your your opponent, especially after they've gone through the channel of Mount Heroics, uh, is going to be able to really threaten your... Your life still enough to kill you mm -hmm. before you can make the rune chance needed to kill him. Become the Arc Knight. Um, going for a vexing malice here. That's uh, 
I that... guess a way to try to chip a couple more damage in, but yeah, has no he go can only again, block. Though, right? He can only block one because it's coming in for a source of two. Um, unle unless well, he, he pitches a blow. Um, he has, so. he, yeah, he has skull cap. He's not worried about the arcane. I think this is a huge yeah, win for just... Nathan here, just getting two cards out of his hand. Um, and and you, you see, he takes it. So I think. That, Why uh, would he take um, one there? Yeah. There's no reason for him to take one damage right here. Um. What? Yeah, he what? took it. I'm not sure. Why not 100 sure. one there? He needs to keep his life total as high as possible right I, now. I agree. Hmm. Well, Brandon's probably a much better player than I am, so I'll just assume that he knows what he's doing over there. Yeah, I um, think he might be too. You know, <laughs> um, curious to see, uh, curious to see how this pans out for him, or if he's just kind of like admitted the fact that he's probably not going to win this game. What's happening here? Uh, since, he... Since oh, he, he didn't, didn't, he didn't deal, deal arcane. arcane. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Brandon was kind of forced to um to block both arcane here, and he's going to come in for a C and C. Um, he probably just full blocks this, um, and then comes in with three cards to do something. Might get pummeled here. Yeah, uh, it's it's very possible that uh, that card could be a pummel. I want to say we've seen one red one. Is that the third rattle bones? Uh, second rattle bones. I'm pretty second. sure. Yeah. So you got read okay. the runes. That's um, the last read the runes. But that's red one. Yeah, one of the cards that he needed to see. So. He's definitely gonna be happy about that, and we just need to see a Mordred Tide. That's what we need to see. We need to yeah. see a Mordred Tide into another non-attack action of some sort. Oh, and he aw he's awakening for twenty-two. Woo! Twenty-two seismic surges. That's absolutely disgusting. If you guys don't know, what awakening does Earth Fusion. Um, so if you have less uh, life than your opposing he the opposing hero, create a size and surge equal to the difference. If awakening was fused, instead create twice that much. His next uh, attack is three. And then it says search <laughs> your deck for a guardian attack action card with costs equal to or less than or equal to the number of seismic surges. Reveal it and put it into your hand. And what did he what did he just add off there, Alex? Sp he'll get spinal. So he added oh, Jesus Christ. Um that's incredible. But just a, fr a free spinal. Yep. And his awakening, awakening an inst yeah, it's an instant. It's an instant speed. Okay, I was about to say he Nathan yeah. drew up. That's incredible. Oh Ooh. wow! Another uh, Earth Lord Surge into Spinal Crush for yep. free. So we got, um, we have a free Spinal Crush for plus five. Fourteen. So you're coming in for fourteen. Um, that's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, this is the third time this game. I think he's attacked for over ten. Yeah. Which is uh, definitely always, seems like that's what his uh, what his deck wants to do. Always pretty good. Um, I'm much more of a fan of attacking twice rather than once big. But when your effects have crush effects like spinal, um, it's not, okay. It's not right? bad. Yeah, it's not <laughs> bad. Um, I still don't think it's enough to kill the Viscerai player. Uh, he's a lot of life total to work with. So unless his hand's very good here, he's probably just gonna <clears throat> chunk his hand in front of it. That's that's what I'm thinking too. Um, Just have no way to get dominate in in the Oldham deck other than on the thumps. So, um, so he, that's the advantage of playing Bravo. Like, like you don't get the Earth or Surge, but you get the dominate. You know? Yeah. He uh. So looking looking at this, he needs to block eleven here, or he's not gonna have a turn. He just he he's. <sighs> He well, can I mean, only play one card. Plays one card. Yeah, yeah, which a lot of times he card. is. So. Yeah. Well, that's the thing too, right? Like, uh, even if he has three cards in his hand that defend for three, and he can only block with his grasp of the Ark Knight, he's only defending ten, so he's not gonna get. It. I don't think he's worried about the uh, the crush effect here. Um, if I was him, I would just be preserving my life total. Um, Saving the one card that makes rune chance, make a few more rune chance pass. Eventually, your opponent's just not going to have a 14 attack crush turn, you know. <laughs> um, sure. And you'll, you'll be able to play out your Mordred Tide plus whatever else you need to play.
How much does he have to pitch to make a rune chant? Like, if he was just to, like, keep some cards in his hand with grasp. Two um, resources. You'd, you'd have, have to, to pitch. pay five. You'd have just to pay to five, to yeah. Chain. It's whatever you have plus two. That's an unfortunate, uh, unfortunate card to a... get rid of there. I... Oh. oh, that's nice. The reduce. He ended up drawing it. Um, so yeah, it, what this, what this is telling me is, um, it was a full block, right? Or yeah. take one. He takes he two. Take one. Takes two? Yeah. But he still but, gets a rune chant off the reduce, yeah, Being right? able to create a rune chant at the very least, like what you were saying, you need to pay five. He just made one, didn't have to pay a single thing, right? So, um, yeah. <laughs> that's nice. And he was able to pretty much full block it. Um, yeah, he's, he's almost to the point now where he, uh. He's got enough rune chance to go in again. I'd, I'd say he probably would need about eight. He's got um, 16 cards left in deck, which is yeah. a real threat at this point. He's got yeah. no more Sonatas. Uh, I believe he has one, Sonatas and one ninth played left. Out of Sonatas, and his opponent has uh, 44 cards left in deck to 16. I think he's got one ninth played left. No that's, Sonatas, that's gonna be double killer. more Drip Tide, right? I'm calling it right now. He's going to build up just enough rune chance to play a ninth played. Just he's going gonna, for a nine and he, nine. He, he's gonna ninth blade for game. Yeah, that's that's my uh, that's my prediction. Um, we've seen quite a bit of Modern Skies. Um, he played two on his OT or his his big turn, and I know he's blocked for at least two more. So I want to say he might have one or two more left. They always have Modern Skies left. <laughs> There's so yeah. many of those cards. Yeah. He's is he playing all the rainbow or? He's not playing the red one. I don't believe. Um. It's obvious. It's objectively the worst one, but it's also the most powerful one. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, but if you're going straight OTK, you don't want to have that extra red, red in your hand. Oh, for um, sure. So, for sure. Well, let's see if, uh, if Brandon has any sort of uh, punishing follow-up turn again. Uh, he he I definitely mean, needs to keep going tall here. Like he, he needs to keep to. threatening. He needs to keep threatening Nathan's hand because he doesn't yeah. have a whole lot of cards left in deck, and so. He's going to eventually draw a hand that he's going to want to keep some cards. So uh, the thumps are really good at threatening threatening the hand. Um, the spinal crushes are really good. Oh, he's going Goliath here. Is a Command and Conquer or something? Ah, no, it's just so he's, got a, thump. he's got a thump. Yeah. Um, yep. This is what he needs to keep doing. Just needs to keep threatening Nathan's hand. I, uh, I'm curious to to see if Nathan's even playing. Have you seen a meet and greet even be blocked with this game? Um, because I don't think I've seen a meet and greet, if I recall correctly. You know, I don't think I have. Yeah. Um, and that quite possibly could be something that he tries to finish the game off with if he can, like, construct his turn, right? Right. But, uh, um, thumb coming in for enough. eight dominates insane. He's going to need enough rune chance to make sure one gets through uh, mm -hmm. so that the, the meet and greet can get its go again. The thumps is what is what Brandon needs, though. Um, this might be one of the last time. You know, it's going to be really tough if, uh, if if Brandon can draw like a pummel to follow this up. Uh, not like right on this particular turn, um, even though it would be very good here. Um, but like maybe like for next turn to like have have a pummel with a thump, or you know, just keep chaining together these these sure. effects where where Nathan's just not going to have a hand to work with. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's how he's gonna end up winning this game, but for sure, it's. I think when you're looking at the poker odds percentages at a table, you know when they're drawing their hands and they're showing the odds to win the the win the hand. Um, I if I had to guess right now, it's probably like eighty twenty in uh, Nathan's favor. Mm -hmm. He's gonna need to draw the the really good. There's your meet and there, greet. There's one of the meet and greets. Um, I think he might have defended with one earlier. I think you're right. I think he defended with a blue one earlier. Or is he playing the blue one? I don't believe he's playing the blue one, actually. Mm. Uh, we got to lose a card here. That's that's a couple things he and I have been talking about. Um, what do you think is in his arsenal at this point? You know, Maybe I it's really... Like, it's really got to be one of the key cards, know. right? Like a like Knight Blade or something? Or I'm not... All right, yeah. All right, he just oh. goes read the runes. Okay. That's very good card to have here. Just going up to six rune chances uh, is powerful. Um... It's, it seems to me you got Nathan now with a 13 cards left in deck. Um, He's just got to not die here, pitch a blue, play a 
play a ninth blade or merge your tide into something set up for the pitch pitch and, yeah. and go for the ninth blade. He needs to find um, a way. He needs to find a way to have a go again. Yeah. If he if Always he's able to that Malvern. If he's able to have a Mavern Skies or just a way to get going, oh, this, oh, here it is. this yeah. is crazy. That's what I'm talking about. He needs to be able to chain together these these problematic cards. Yeah. Um, doesn't look like he's fusing it, though, because he's not really playing hardly any ice in the deck. Well, I think um, still it's going to create um, some issues with... with it's only uh, if it if hits he, until he the just... end of the turn. Whenever they activate an ability, they'll create a Frostbite. Um, so... He's just taking the damage here, so I'm, I'm assuming Nathan probably has game. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, too. Um, how threatening could it be? He must have, like, two blues in hand to do things with, too, right? So, And then the rune chance also help with a lot of stuff that's going to reduce the cost um, So, um, of anything if he's trying to activate an ability. So if he has a, if he has a source of go again, I think this is where he wins the game. Um, Most likely. It's gonna be very difficult for his opponent if, he, like, if his opponent has like one red card in hand, or two red cards in Definitely hand. Definitely gonna be tough for sure. Yeah, and he's playing quite a few of the the more aggro. And cards. he's got the and he's got the rune flash, so he does have the he has the means to get go again here. So he's coming in for rune flash for six plus four. Um, and honestly, honestly get... too, if he creates, uh, if uh, he takes any of the any of the arcane here. Um, he might have double ways to get, you know, get go again. So he's not even taking the, the, the arcane, which is, I, in my opinion, the correct play to go about it. Um, Oof, yeah, he's he had a blocking four. Um, we haven't seen a defense reaction out of Brandon yet, right? We have not. So I don't um, think that's going to be a D react in Arsenal. So in theory, if that's not a D react or some sort of like sigil or something, which I he's don't got, think he's playing. He's got three. He's only he's got, got three got things he can deal with. So one way to block four damage. So. Yeah. So if we see like a, a Mavern Skies into another attack pitch into Reaping Blade, I think that should be game. Well, the issue with this, right, is, um, well, I don't know. Um, if he's got meet and greet and a blue in hand, um, I think he just wins the game here anyway, because he can just go pitch a blue, make a gra uh, activate grasp, make a rune chant. Um, and then he just goes, um, and then he just goes meet and greet, and he can't do, he he can't just win the game at that point because it's one coming in. Oh, he strikes seven. Okay, he just wins the game. Okay, fair enough. Um, seven plus one, that should be enough. Yep. So he takes the one, and he defends Arc spinal three, crush, four. and that's game. Yep. GGs. Yep. Just GGs. Uh, another attack in Arsenal. Yep. How do you flip yep. a card over? Ah, oh, it was the rattle bones. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense. Um, that's a great game though. Um, Brandon's deck was actually very unique, and uh, I actually really enjoyed watching super big attacks with Earthor surges and Channel Man heroics. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's how you have to try to beat the OTK Viscera. Is just keep attacking their hand. Um, I mean that game could have been over a lot sooner had his Sonata for four hit one card you know yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, so that was pretty unfortunate on, on Nate's uh, side of the board and you know I think that match went just about how I imagined it um, yeah same um, I expected the OTK us been out of here 10 minutes ago but like like you said uh, I think the resilience of, uh, of Brandon showed not dying and uh, trying to make a game out of it and he did and then uh, Nathan sure. just being patient I think patience was the key to that match. Um, so, very good on, on Nathan's end. We'll get him in here. We'll talk to him. We'll talk over the match and see kind of what his thoughts were and everything. Um, so, yeah. Uh, we're up 1-0. Go team. <laughs> Hashtag not last place. We did it. Hey, there he is. We uh, did it. Overall, can, what we get did, an F, what did you, uh... can we get an F in chat for the uh, Sonata for four that whiffed? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, I kind I, I kind of did it. I kind of did it prematurely. You're not supposed to pop off at 16. Yeah, we were, um, we were thinking like your hand was gas. Like, well, yeah, I, I drew. I, I so in Arsenal, I had a Sonata. 
I drew a Sonata and two Mavrian skies. Two Mavrians, yep. Yeah, and I was like, okay, and he just played Channel Mount Heroic. So I was like, this hand doesn't block for anything, and he's about to hit me with like a spinal for like 14 or something. And so like this is it. And I was like, I'll have the go again to at least get there. And I had the backup plan of like, you know, I'd pitched a lot of cards that, you know, like that had go again, like like the E strike and stuff like that. Um and so um or I, they were still in the deck at least. Uh and that whole game I only saw one Mordred Tide, which was very unfortunate. Yeah, we were waiting for the Mordred Tide there to kinda close out the amount of ring chance you needed to win the game. Yep. Right, right. And that was the that and I had the so I went for the E strike play at the end there and my backup plan was I had the rattle bones um I had the rattle bones in Arsenal and I was just gonna get like a three blue into like a ninth blade. Or, or like a two blue and a little something else into a ninth blade was uh was like my my third backup yeah um but i mean once once he was at four life i mean it was just a matter of time he had some good attacks that came in for a lot of damage that had on hit effect but, but we got there his deck was very interesting honestly i was um i was thinking that uh he kind of took a page out of matt rogers's deck when uh that he saw yesterday because i know he matt rogers doing something similar as far as yeah, just all gas super tall you um, have to do yeah. that against viscera or it's or it's an automatic loss right yeah, because if sure. you if you have a bunch of defense reactions and stuff and that's how i knew i had the game on the e strike was you know he wasn't playing the defense reactions and oh, so sure. and and um you know but that's how you have to play it if you if you want a chance against viscera so for sure. Well, well played. Or we're up 1-0 yeah, um, in our it. last place match. I'm so happy that we're up 1-0. That's awesome. That's it. That's um, it. <clears throat> but, yeah, guys, uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe, and whatnot, and you'll see more of us uh, in the next matches to come. But uh, until then, it's been Alex, Nathan, and Kyle with the car, guys. See you guys later. That's it. Take it easy.